I'm George Williams and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Hell Slow project where I am going to totally transform my car into looking like it's a totally different Exige ultimately. Today we're going to be covering my custom rear wing design and bringing you along for the build and design process. What I have here is a Cup R wing upright. And this was the basis of our design. If you see here, we have the bottom section and what that does is go through the actual clam and that bolts into the subframe of the car at the bottom. I want a chassis mounted wing, so that means it's gonna bolt into the subframe. The benefit of that is that the downforce is loaded direct onto the subframe, which means it's more effective. There's no loss in compression of the clam or anything like that. It is slightly more complicated than just bolting something onto the clam because I have to make it so that it all goes through the clam. Um, so I have these brackets. These are from the Lotus Cup R race car and it gives me a really good starting point. So. I'm using these and then from here upwards it's all my own custom parts. What's going to happen, these go on here, I need to drill through the subframe, put some nice big uh, M8 I think bolts in there um, and then a nut on the other side. Now it's a lot easier to do it now whilst I've got access to it all. Um, so I'm going to do that, uh, I need to drill through. So we've got a drill, I've got a load of new drill bits which hopefully will survive. Um, I've marked it with masking tape. The part afterwards is the more scary bit when I have to cut a slot in this clam, which, which I just bought for a lot of money. So yeah, let's get to it. So here you can see I've got a bit of 5mm ply and I've just drawn around the outline of that template technical drawing. So I don't need to cut out any of the middle bits but I'm going to cut this out with a jigsaw which you can see down there. Um, and yeah hopefully this is the first visualisation of how my wing is going to look. So I'm underneath the clam and I drew around where the edge of the subframe is so I got a reference and then once I'd done that I could put this on like so which is the wing mount underneath and then I drew around that and then I've basically drilled a hole in each corner of that and that's where I'm going to cut so that that can slide through. There we have it. My ears are ringing, should have worn ear protection of course. Um, yeah, we have a hole. And hopefully it fits. Pretty happy with that. Um, I need to just tweak the size of the hole a little bit so that it can shift over. Uh, that is a clam bolt there behind, so you can see it lines up. Um, I've got the same on the other side. It needs a tiny bit of tweaking. I'm just gonna rest some bolts in there measure up just how much extra I need to cut and then annoyingly clam comes off again it's pretty constant this um, and then yeah I, I need to take it off and try again basically it's a very repetitive process cut a little bit more each time and and hope for the best after lots of little cuts and refinement I'm at this stage so the bolts fit into the subframe, everything is straight. Um, there's one thing that's slightly challenging when doing this on your own, and that is that I need to get a spanner 
onto the underside of the nut um, and I can't reach the top and the bottom at the same time so suddenly this becomes a two-man job for something really quite simple um, but it's kind of in there secure enough um, that it gives me a ballpark what I now need to do is measure the distance between the second hole up and the underside of the clam and that then means I can make a template and basically work out where the wing is actually going to come out of the clam on the upper side um, so I can draw around it and then I will basically put from the underside I will drill where it comes up at the two ends and then I will cut a slot and yes that's the bit I'm terrified of so I'm not looking forward to that bit it's very much a measure a million times and hopefully cut only once so for those of you wondering what I'm actually doing um, this template if I can show this goes all the way up to the clam and it's pretty solid now I've got it in the right place it's all bolted up um, that, that front one's not tight but it's in the right place the second one down there is tight um, what I'm gonna do is take a marker pen and basically just draw around this and that will give me the points where it comes out of the clam this is the bit I've been dreading started incredibly small with these holes so you can barely see them at this stage um, now what I will do is it's a lot easier to cut from the top is mask it up draw onto it the size of the slots and then we'll go from there oh this is the terrifying bit so I have marked it out, I've measured all the way along and I'm cutting out for a 6mm slot. The actual uprights will be 8mm but my wooden template I'm using is 5mm so going with 6mm gives me enough clearance that when the 8mm comes along I have a degree of movement either direction when needed so I can hopefully get it correct. Um, I'm absolutely bricking it for this bit. I'd call that a pretty fucking massive win. Okay, this feels like a huge moment. I'm so happy. So, that cutting all went to plan. Do have a bit of a bend on this wood, but it's not a huge problem. I'm gonna make another one of these soon. Um, in terms of height, you can now visualize it a bit better. It is, so uh, I'm at the roof line of the car there. So it's a little bit higher than the roof of the car, but the wing obviously sits below the mounts. Um, might trim a little bit off the top edge there on the final design. Um, oh, this is so handmade engineering, but I have this in place. Uh, it will mount like that. I need to make another one of these. Um, and first thoughts. I hold it in place is it looks like the boot is gonna clear so that's great news that is the whole point of doing all of this in wood is to basically test and for those of you wondering yes it's gonna sit a really long way back on the car um, I don't think it's a huge issue in fact it's actually what I'm going for so yeah exciting 
So from a visual design point of view, my first thought was that it looked a little bit too close to this edge here, the distance there. So I've just raised it up 30 mil by simply bolting it into higher holes there, which obviously has meant there's a gap. Um, you can see where the old line was of how high it was. And I just think it just looks better. Uh, yes, it's obscene. That is kind of the whole point. Um, it's very hard to visualise at the moment because it's actually going to have a bar the whole way across. Okay, I am checking in another day and as you can see, I now have two wing upright templates. They're a bit rough. I've noticed a few problems actually. Um, so I'm going to run that through now. The reason I have it set up like this, and yes, I know it's rough, is this bar across effectively marks the furthest forward point that the wing can go and therefore I can test the boot lid. I'm 99% sure it's going to be absolutely fine um, but I would rather test and discover any problems. Um, so talking of problems and this is something I'm very glad that I've worked out. I've got a spirit level here and as you can see, it is not at the angle that we were aiming for. And I must confess, this is probably my fault. These brackets down here sit at a bit of a funny angle. And therefore we need to adjust this top edge just to bring it up. And that will just pitch the wing up and give us the adjustability on the angle of attack that we want probably worth noting that the angle and the height can be adjusted so I mean it's very rough but there are all these bolt holes so and there will be a load of holes in this as well in the actual upright in yeah in the upright which will give you a load of choice as to where you want to position the wing it's also height adjustable and this isn't something I was expecting but we've realized if we add a bit of depth on that and two more holes, we can bolt in for all four when it's in max height, and then we can go down a level um, to give us more, more options. Um, I can trim off some downforce, so I can stall it out if I want to with the angle. So I'm really hoping that it gives me the adjustment I need. Good morning. I have the car outside for the first time in quite a while, and I have the clam on, the boot lid on, and of course, it's hard to do this point thing, but the wing in wood. So let's take a closer look. So I kind of need to show you various different angles here. It is quite large. So if I come round to the side, what I can do is freeze frame it and give you a bit of an idea of how it will look when it's done. So I'll quickly Photoshop on some end plates and then make the uprights a bit more permanent looking. I mean, it's going to be ludicrous. It's hard to visualise without the front end. So I've got to say that went really well. We've got to a stage now where we have refined the CAD and I can show you that now. So this CAD file is ready to be sent off and ordered. I've also got the dimensions needed for the wing so I can order it with the correct distance between uh, the mounting points. So that's been submitted to Reverie. They are in process. There's a bit of a wait. It's an eight week wait, roughly. Um, I'm hoping that they're not late on that because it might delay the rest of things. But the uprights are gonna be CNC by Lee and in theory we're a couple of weeks away on that so I'm going to test fit those because they're actually 8 mil. so I'm going to need to expand the slots in the bodywork a little bit to fit them um, and we want to do that before we paint the clam so I'll get that done we can test them in place check I'm absolutely happy with the angle with the clearances etc etc and then we're ready for the wing and 
One thing I still need to decide is whether the wing uprights remain silver or whether they go black. I'm leaning towards black and get them anodized as they're aluminium. But we'll see. So there's a load of exciting stuff happening here. I'm sorry I can't quite show you them on the car yet in metal form with the final design. Um, but I have shown you the CAD so you know what I'm working towards. It's all quite exciting. It feels like a good stage of the project. Um, for those of you wondering about how much aero there's going to be, they are height adjustable. I can also change the angle of attack on the wing. So I'm hoping that gives me the ability to get the ballpark correct where I can then balance it to the front of the car. And of course, there is going to be quite a lot going on with the front compared to even a Cup R, which is their race car. So I know that I'm working towards quite good figures. And ultimately, my car isn't an actual race car. I like to do a couple of track days a year. I'm not a huge track goer, but I like the look and I want that race car look for the car. As it, It's always felt like a race car for the road to me. So a bit of downforce and a bit more aggression on the look of it, I think will be really cool. And I think I can get in the ballpark where the aero is functioning. To give you a rough idea of the figures, so the wing profile and the width we're doing has a max downforce figure in newtons. So divide that by 10 roughly um, of about 1500, which is about 150 kilograms of downforce in theory. Uh, interestingly, Reverie don't actually tell you what speed that is at, but I'm going to assume that's at quite a high speed of 150 miles an hour or more. We've tested in CAD the strength of the uprights to make sure that we can handle the actual down force on them and we're about right um, we built in some st some safety net um, because we don't want them snapping we don't want them bending um, the actual weakest point is probably the bolts so i hope you enjoyed the video please subscribe everything like that sorry about my cat he really wants to be in the video. Um, we've got some really cool stuff coming soon. The car is going to be transported to Ken at KSD, the paint shop. And that means we can start work on basically fixing the bits that are wrong with the clams, primer, fill. And we're going to do it the proper way. We're going to block sand it. We're going to take our time. And I'm going to bring you guys along for that journey. So I'm going to do my best to help Ken out wherever I can. Um, it helps on costs, obviously, if I do any work myself. But also, I want to learn a little bit from Ken. I want to show you guys the process. To me, it's absolutely fascinating, this paint process. So that's to come. I've got parts which should be arriving soon, um, which I'm quite excited for. Quite a lot of carbon. And yeah, I'll bring you guys along and show you what's what. Thank you for watching.